shim oh, shimmer. shimmer. What do you guys know about Thanksgiving? Raise your hand. I'm very much not perfect, but even doing a little bit or the best you can is always better than nothing. Salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> yes. It's called Soul to Story. And I just kind of like come up with it as I'm listening to the song. And I also am finding that introducing math concepts with some sort of game on the first day is like a really, a really nice way to kind of jump into it and get them excited about it. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I am a first grade teacher in Las Vegas. This is my fourth year of teaching, and we have two days this week, and then we're off. What I'm actually doing right now is I'm going back to my old vlogs <laughs> because I like to watch how I um, like taught things and just like I don't know, kind of refresh my memory a little bit. Get back, kind of see where I was, do a little self comparison with where we are now. Is the rhyme. So, thumbs up if you see the rhyme. Ooh, that's the ending. Good job. This is the rhyme. Full. Full. That's the blend at the beginning. Where's the rhyme? Go ahead. If. If is the rhyme. Ready? If. Full. Flip. Flipper. Good. Ready? Who sees the rhyme? What is this? Um, I am. I am. Good. Shim. 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 Shimmer. I thought it said um, summer. It looks kind of like summer. But Gotta pay attention to that, to that vowel, too. Okay. Alright, who sees the rhyme? Yeah. Uh, Do you see it? Act. Act. You're right. Ready? Act, flat, 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 splatter, splatter, you splatter, paint, ugh, ready, ready, ugh, jug, jug, oh, juggle, okay, I'm gonna give you some cards, and what you are going to do is the first thing you're going to do, hold on please, is you're going to find the rhyme, okay? Up, stop, stopping. Okay, so you're going to find the rhyme, and then the beginning, and then the end, okay? I want you to whisper, whisper, whisper. And if you get to one that you're not sure about, just put your thumb up, and I'll take a peek and help you, okay? Oh, dog. Close win. Winner. Winner. Good. Okay, let me see. Where's the rhyme? Okay. Uh, 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 so you didn't need me. Ab, scuffle, ab, ing, scrubbing. Oh, at, good. Instead of saying all oh, at, can you just blend it together? So, at, lat, splat, splat, splat. You're going to find a double. So, if I have three plus three, for example, three plus three equals. Six. So this is my answer up at the top. What color do I color it? Orange. Three plus three is six, and you know eight plus eight equals sixteen. All right. If you want to whisper, sing that while you work. I'm okay with it, but just make sure you're not distracting your friends. What is eight plus eight equal? Equals, equals 16. Okay, so 16 is great. Abuela is grandma. Abuelo is grandpa. 
I ask Abuelo because he knows everything. And like me, he looks like he doesn't belong. They're just riding him because a gaucho is like a, like a cowboy kind of. From this land where our ancestors built a home for all. Who knows what that word means? Ancestor. What is an ancestor? Do you know? Um, an ancestor is like, like, kind of like your, your sister, but not your sister. So a family like member? A it kind of like your cousin, your, your sister. So it's like a family member, but it's an older family member, right? Mm -hmm. right? Usually from a time when you're not alive. It's someone who came before you in your family, an ancestor. What do you guys know about Thanksgiving? Raise your hand. Okay, he said a lot. We celebrate our families. We talk together and we eat together. Let's see, what else do we know about Thanksgiving? Yeah, mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's kind of fancy. So Thanksgiving's a holiday, right? Yeah. And we usually spend it with people that we love or people in our family or people that we're close to. There's creaming casseroles. So we have a lot of food or a feast, right? Yeah, it's a tradition. It's something that you do every year. She said, for example, every year she goes and she looks at Christmas lights. So we have traditions that we do. Well, a tradition is something that happens every year. Do you know why we celebrate Thanksgiving? And time with our families. Yeah, it's a time that everybody makes sure to spend time with their families if they have them. Do you think everybody celebrates Thanksgiving? No. Okay, why not? Okay, you don't think they celebrate Thanksgiving in China because why? Because... The Chinese New Year, yeah, they have different holidays um, in China and across like the it. world. I don't, I don't have it. I don't so, do you think Thanksgiving it. is a holiday that is only in America? No. 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 What else do you know about Thanksgiving? So today we're going to learn a lot about Thanksgiving and Native Americans and Indigenous peoples, which are people who are who had who were on the land first. It was their land that they take care of, um, and we're going to hear a lot of really big words today. So I need you to make sure your listening ears are on because this is really important, okay? Okay, turn your bodies towards the board. I'm going to let Moby help us out. We live way over here. Okay, so it's far away from where we are. Thousands of years, they've lived in the area that is now Massachusetts. Yeah, they used huts as like a symbol, but that's where their communities were, right? So the Wampanoag lived here. So this is a Wampanoag man, and this is like a Wampanoag woman. Can you see how they're kind of dressed similar? And can you see how the Europeans are dressed differently? Yeah, because they're, the Wampanoag's bodies weren't used to had from the other country. Kind of like if you go to visit someone who lives in another state and they're sick and then you get sick and then now it's in your body and you're not used to it. Or why a lot of times if you have little brothers or little sisters who are starting pre-K, they might get sick a lot, right? Like your sister because their bodies aren't used to all those different germs. So an ally is someone who helps you, okay? So an ally to Batman would be who? Um, Robin. Girl. Yeah, Robin. Batgirl. Or Batgirl, those are allies, right? They work together for something. Their leader met with their leader and they shook hands. They came upon an agreement to help each other. Does that mean they were best friends? No. Nope, they're just agreeing. So we already talked about how different countries maybe celebrate different things, right? But different countries also have different resources. So the pilgrims that came over to where we are here in America, they weren't used to the resources that we have. They weren't used to, we call them crops. They didn't know how to hunt or how to gather or how to use the land, right? Because did they have grocery stores back then? No, this was a long time ago. They didn't have grocery stores. This was hundreds of years ago. They had to figure it out on their own. So the Wampanoag people, yeah, except the pilgrims chose to come. They weren't kicked out. They, they chose to come here. So the Wampanoag helped them. Oops. They taught them how to hunt, how to gather, how to use different resources in the land, how to grow crops, because they made an agreement, right? That word owl. Celebrating. They're allies, right? They're allies. So they said, oh, it sounds like they need help. So here they come to investigate, to make sure they're okay because they're allies. And what did they see? Do you think the Europeans had enough food for all of these Wampanoags that came? No. 
No. They didn't have enough food, so the Wampanoags actually decided to help them. So they went and they hunt and they gathered more food and they brought it over and they actually brought so much food over that they could feast for days and days and days. They actually brought a lot more food for them too. Over time, people began a tradition of sharing a big meal in the fall. Sometimes when we see food that looks different to what we're used to, our first reaction is to say, ew. Do you think that's a fair thing or an unfair thing to do? Unfair. Unfair. Just because it's different, does that mean it's bad? No. No, okay. I, 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 so if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. Yeah. We have to respect other people in their culture because that's what's important to and them too, food, right? Because if they cook it and they you don't have to say it looks good if you don't think so, but you just need to respect that it's different, okay? Okay. Priscilla is from the Philippines, and their feast includes lumpia, a roll filled with meat and vegetables. Miss Carl's part Filipino. No matter what people eat, Thanksgiving is about spending time together. And I want you to help me sound it out. Ready? Thanks. Thanks. Thanksgiving. 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 Anything else? Yeah. Um, can we let, um, what's it called? Um, Wampanoag? Yeah. yeah. I'll put it here. Can you do happy? Happy? Say happy. Happy. What is the, what's the rhyme in happy? A. A. Spell hap. H A P. Good. Before we add our ending, we need to spell so happy. H A P P Y. Happy. Four or five big goals I know by heart. I N G. Good. My sentence was Thanksgiving is a holiday. Thanksgiving is finger spaces between November. Good. I don't know how to spell that word. No. Them -ber. November is important. N O No Them. Okay, it's the end of the day. I tried to keep today pretty chill. We actually had, well, I don't know about everybody. I had a great day today. Like, I felt like there were a lot of teacher wins that happened today. So, thankful for that. Um, we did our independent reading. I pulled a couple kids to my back table and just worked on sounding out words. Wanted to see how they were doing, kind of like a check-in with those kids. A little bit later, did a color by number, except it was with doubles. So it was like three plus three, and then like the answer was six. So you had to color that part orange, and it was like this color by code Thanksgiving pie. We read the book, Where Are You From? Um, and at this point in the day, I was kind of losing my patience a little bit because they were not listening. That's okay. We bounced back. We watched the Thanksgiving Brain Pop that Brain Pop Jr. has on their website. It's actually pretty good. It gives a lot of, um, a lot of historical, I feel like it's good for first grade, a lot of historical information about Thanksgiving and um, who celebrates it and why they celebrate it. Um, so as the video was playing, I kind of stopped and talked with them um, and kind of added a few extra details. I know that I am not perfect and I don't know all of the details about like Thanksgiving and everything but I do the best that I can with them with the knowledge that I've learned and every year I feel like I learn a little bit more so it makes it easier every year to teach it because it's my first year teaching it wasn't really like my mission to teach like the truth behind Thanksgiving like I don't know like that was the book that my team read oh thank you Sarah is what the book was called like I read that book and I can't everything else is kind of like a blur I started to learn more about like the importance of sharing like the truth about Thanksgiving so it gets a little bit easier for me every year and I just wanted to say that in case you were maybe intimidated by it because it can seem a little bit overwhelming especially if you're someone who like does share on the internet because people the way they come across sometimes are very rude instead of helpful um, so I don't do a lot of the like let's make a bunch of like feather things and talk about how wonderful this time of year is because for some people it's not. I also feel like it's important for me to come on here and share with you guys that 
I'm very much not perfect, but even doing a little bit or the best you can is always better than nothing. When we came back from lunch, we did a writing and I put up a couple of keywords for them, but I wanted to challenge them a little bit. So I modeled this, which is a lot. This lighting is way better. I modeled this and I was just kind of free flowing in like the first sentence I had them help me sound it out but then I kind of just wrote and modeled how I was sounding things out and going back and checking so and then I gave them the same paper and I feel like my kids always do really you gonna stay fall good I feel like my kids do really well during writing time like this class is one that just takes it super seriously so I'll show you their paper totally independent I'm trying not to show the names. I don't know if you can see like how much they wrote. This guy was at my table. Can you see? Even some of them, like we haven't talked about commas in a series, but on my paper, I kind of emphasized this when I was writing it. I said, at my house we have turkey, comma, ham, comma, stuffing, comma, mac and cheese. Like I emphasized the commas there and a lot of them use them in their writing, so I didn't even have to like explicitly teach that yet but some of them are doing that because they they'll catch on but really encouraging and I was even tearing up because there was one friend at my table who at the beginning of the year I mean couldn't read a single CBC word couldn't did, like didn't have all his letters but he was over here and he wrote like three or four sentences not like perfect sentences but he sounded out every single thing he made sure to do his punctuation. He was singing the writing superstar song. He was going back and checking and like, this is what he wrote. Thanksgiving is fun because you get to eat turkey and you get to see your friends and you also get to, oh, he read this to me, get to something and something and we, he read it to me perfectly. I think I recorded it for his mom. But he, like, went back and double-checked everything. He has, like, everything he needs. He just needs, um, he just needs more phonics. But it's, I teared up reading it and watching him because I was so proud. And one of my kids today, who I usually have to, like, pull teeth with to get to do something, I let him sit at my back table, which I do sometimes. Um, but he was sitting there and he was, like, really going for it. His handwriting, which is usually, like all over the place was really really nice and neat and he was sounding out his words and he was asking for help when he needed it but for the most part he was independent and I was filming him for his mom too which he really liked and then I called his mom and I've had to call the student's mom before for unpleasant things but I called her and I told her I just wanted to brag on her kid for how well they were doing um, and she was really happy to hear that and then I let I let him sharpen pencils for me which he loved so I think that's gonna be our new our new thing like you work really hard you can help miss call sharpen pencils win-win and all of my kids were like because I don't let them sharpen pencils ever like they didn't even know we had a pencil sharpener in our classroom because I never let them do it so we did the writing then I let them get on teach your monster how to read which is one of my favorite websites for kids it's totally free um the app costs money but every now and then it's free but the website is teach your monster how to read so you create an account for all your kids and they can get on there and it goes through a ton of phonics skills for them and it's it's kind of adaptive so the more that they learn the harder it gets and then at the very end of the day we did our unit four test which is addition within 20 and it looks like this so addition at the top, word problems, and number line at the bottom. And I'm not going to grade it because I am on a mission to get a quilt. I'm really excited about it. And John actually had work off today because, I don't know why actually, <laughs> but he had work off, which he goes tomorrow, but tomorrow's his birthday. So it's weird. But anyways, um, he had work off today. So he actually went shopping for all of our Thanksgiving food and everything. So I'm excited to go shopping and get home. Let's get a pottery barn. It's dark and you cannot see me. It's a success. So I did end up getting a duvet because 
um, they had their duvets out to where I could like feel them. And I've just, like looked at the ones in Target before and they've just felt like, why spend like $99 on a really bad one? You know what I mean? I got the Hydro Cool Duvet to try linen sheets. If you are a linen sheet lover, let me know in the comments because I've heard they get softer and softer with each wash and they just sleep so nicely. Um, and I did get the quilt that I wanted, so I'm very happy. And the other nice thing is I am so thankful to be at a place in life where, thanks to you guys too for supporting me, but at a place where I can finally like invest in quality pieces that I'm gonna have for years and years. It just is something that I'm so thankful for every day. So I'm off to go home. I need to also wrap John's not wrap I'm not wrapping it with wrapping paper but I just have like a bag and tissue paper I need to get John's birthday gift ready because his birthday is tomorrow some clothes and then a gooseneck electric tea kettle because I got him a Chemex um, and we used to have an electric tea kettle like a super cheap one and it broke so I got a from Target like a Cuisinart 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 <laughs> electric tea kettle which me and John haven't been buying each other like gifts for birthdays or Christmas like we'll do like a little something he's probably gonna be surprised but I just knew there was things that he wanted so I wanted to get him for him they're done turkey is thawing yay I've already cut up onions and the pepper oh my need. gosh look at you why'd you put them in bags did you get a ham yeah where Little baby ham, pigs in a blanket. Did you get crescent rolls? Okay. Crescent rolls. I ran it on the dry Very nice. Okay. Got the one that's called Hydro Cool because the biggest complaint people have about like linen, not linen, about duvet comforters is that they get one that's too heavy or like they get too hot with it. I got the one that's hydro cool. And she said like, I'll, cause I asked her, I was like, I've never had a duvet before. Like, is this a good one? She was like, yes, it's our best seller. It's fluffy. Duvet is the insert. So this is the duvet, which they make down. I learned all of this. They make down, which is like the feathers. I learned all of this from who? The internet for four hours last night. Okay. Down, which is like feathers. And then there's down alternative, which is like re recycled other things to mimic, to mimic the feathers. But I didn't get the feathers. And some people said like, feathers can also be like loud or like sometimes they can be pokey. But I also am like, I don't want to deal with feathers flying out. It's like- I mean like our couch. Oh yeah, our couch has goose feathers. Yeah. Feathers come out of it all the time. They do? Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't want to deal with that. But I don't know how to put it, like, I don't know the way you're supposed to put it on. Maybe we should put the sheets on first. There's like a way to do it because it's hard to do. I don't know, people like, there's like a burrito method. Close your eyes. Open. <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> they cost $6,000. No, guess. Seventy dollars a piece. Why, because they're from Pottery Barn? They're not $70 a piece. $70 total. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. They were actually on sale. For $50 a piece. No. This thing's worth 7000 Look, look at the little, look at the little houses. <laughs> so I dreamed of sleeping on silk sheets and she's over here getting me with Well, because silk, like it can like, if it, if your fingernail gets caught or like, I know she said, would you like to donate? Here are our options. And it's like a $50, $50. And I was like, no, but do you do a teacher discount at Amazon? And like all the reviews, like it was like, Bahamas. huh? I feel like I'm in the Bahamas. Also, I would have washed them first, but if we don't like them, then I can't return them if, I, if we wash them. Like, long ways? Yeah, like, if, like how it would be on the bed, but like... Yeah, this is more of a sheet. <laughs> I don't want to say. Mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah. Sorry, you don't see the buttons on top? Stop. I 
Okay, this is our before bed. And this pillow is from Target. Good morning. We are back in the classroom. I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts. It's my Kiss Your Brain shirt and this very cozy cardigan. I wanted to talk about something um, for a little bit with you guys this morning because I mention it all the time in, and whenever people, whenever I'm doing like a Q&A on Instagram or somebody asks me about phonics or reading, I always refer them to a Facebook group called the science of reading, what I should have learned in college. And last night I saw Polka Dots and Planning share a couple of quotes from a podcast. And I had started listening to this podcast because the Facebook group that I was in was raving about it um, and seeing how groundbreaking it was going to be. And here's what the podcast looks like. At least this is what it looks like on Spotify. It's called Soul to Story. It's kind of like black and white, but then a little bit of yellow in here. And it's only six episodes. The episodes are also fairly short. Yeah, like 35, 40-ish minutes. Um, and it is absolutely incredible. It's one of those podcasts that you listen to and you, and you think, oh, I wish every educational podcast was like this. Oh, here's a full blurb, Emily Hanford. Sold a story, how teaching kids to read went so wrong. There's an idea about how children learn to read that's held sway in schools for more than a generation, even though it was proven wrong by cognitive scientists decades ago. Teaching methods based on this idea can make it harder for children to learn how to read. In this podcast, host Emily Hanford investigates the influential authors who promote this idea and the company that sells their work. It's an expose of how educators came to believe in something that isn't true and are now reckoning with the consequences. Children harmed, money wasted, and edu an education system upended. And she talks about a lot of um, familiar names, Marie Clay, Lucy Calkins, um, Fontes and Pinnell, and teachers who are taught to teach reading with a lot of the strategies that she talks about here. Like, what are the, the Beanie Baby strategies? Hold on. Morning. Look who it is. Oh. Leave some giraffes in the comments. <laughs> oh yeah, I murdered four pigeons on my school. Pigeons? Yeah, <gasps> they were like in the road eating. Georgina! Something. They were in the road eating something, and they didn't move. And I had cars on either side of me, so I could not swerve, and I could not slow down. And so I hit them, and it was like a cartoon because I looked in the rearview mirror, and it was like <laughs> and I felt never boom, 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 under my like it was like four of them. Four of them. Yeah. A whole family. It was so sad. Oh, I owe her money. We'll talk more later. This Good. shirt was like five dollars. Heck yeah. Um, but I was saying teachers who are taught to read with like the Beanie Baby strategies and I found them. Sharpie Shark, Hunt for Sight Words, Skippy Frog, Skip the Word, Try and Lion, Try a Word That Makes Sense. Those strategies, like teachers aren't using them because they want an easy way out, but it is kind of created as what seems like an easy way out for teachers. Oh, just like skip the word. Oh, just try a word that makes sense. Like it's the wrong way to read, but teachers aren't teaching it because they think it's harmful. They're teaching it because they think it's helpful. So that's part of the, the big problem about being sold a story. Like this is what's going to help them read. This is what they need to know. When in reality, it's the complete opposite of what kids need and what teachers should be doing but it is a really I'm not gonna make this whole vlog about it but it is a really really great podcast um, and it can kind of give you more of an understanding if you're someone who's been hearing about the science of reading and you're like okay but what is it I don't understand it like what's wrong with what I already know so if you're interested um, go look it up <laughs> so what I'm doing this morning is the little Thanksgiving kind of like a challenge so I have on my PowerPoint like a placemat digital for four different teams and each team has a placemat, and every time they complete a challenge, I'll move a dish to their placemat, and the first team to get all of the dishes done. So green beans, roll, mac and cheese, and pumpkin pie. They'll get the turkey on their placemat. I'll show you. Um, and then they can make their bingo board. So we're gonna do bingo, but they have to complete the challenge first. And I'm hoping it works out. Our schedule is, I don't know. I don't know how much we'll get done, but that's the plan. That's what we're gonna try to do. And if we don't get to anything, 
that'll be okay. That's literally it because we have at our school, it's like a picnic, a family picnic where parents will come at lunch and they will eat with their kids like out in the grass and then 99% of my kids are going home after lunch, which is good. But also then I can't do like the rest of the activities that I had planned and I wasn't, yeah, I don't know. So new school, just rolling with it. Okay, so our plan for today, I had something we were gonna do but I decided that we wouldn't have enough time. We're going to, number one, make turkey headbands. Yay! And then we are going to present our turkey projects, if you did one. And then we're gonna play turkey bingo if we have time, and then 99 math if we have time. I have all the pieces on my table for you. You're just gonna get them one at a time. It's okay if the glue shows, because it'll dry. And then you're gonna press it on, and after you get your turkey all put together, you're gonna put your name, at the top, and then I will get your headband on for you, okay? Come get it, and you're gonna take your turkey on a turkey walk, and you're gonna walk it around to everybody, and then after you've walked it around to everybody, you're gonna go put it in your binder, okay? Let me show everybody. Austin, whoa! A penguin! A very dignified turkey. An army turkey! A gingerbread turkey! Sunflower! I found it! Oh yes! My camera battery died and the one I have charging in my classroom I didn't have plugged in all the way, so I can't show you right now. But basically what I do is I listen to a song and as the song is playing, I kind of like sing in my head a little melody or... We made turkey hats and we played bingo and that was all we did today. The picnic was really sweet because um, a bunch of parents came and they had their little blankets out there and they were all eating with their families. I did have two kids who were here today whose families didn't come, so I just ate with them and we actually ate with another another group of people. Overall, a really sweet experience because a lot of the families at this school, oh, I'm tired. A lot of the families at this school are super involved, so there was there was a pretty big turnout. Um, and since I only had, I actually had, I actually had three kids in the afternoon, so we just went to Georgina's room. She had a couple more kids than I did. Um, and we just hung out and I actually got December planned out. I actually got a lot done today because they were happy making this hat and like listening to music. And so I filing stuff away while they were doing that. And so I was kind of productive today, but at the same time, not like there's still so much I feel like I could do. I might try to stay for an hour and get a couple things done. Um, so for December, again, it's going to be a really crazy month. Next week when you come back, we have a week. And then after that week, we have map testing. After map testing, we're doing a gingerbread theme week, um, which really just like one day that week. We're doing rotations in first grade. And then after that is winter break. So I'll show you what I have. So this is the first week we get back. And then this is during map testing. I want to do holidays around the world. And then this is for gingerbread week. And then we have winter break. So I just kind of sketched out some of my ideas. So because I didn't end up doing this little plate challenge that I was telling you about earlier today, I'll show you what the PowerPoint looked like. So I was going to have four different groups. And as they completed a challenge, like the green beans challenge, I was going to slide that onto their placemat like so. And then when it was full, they would get their turkey on there and they would do, they would get their bingo. They would get their bingo board, um, and I already had the copies and everything made, so I just put it in the envelopes, and I filed it away. But I want to do something similar for next week and make it a Christmas cookie challenge, um, so I can do those little, you know, like those Pillsbury cookies that have, like, the designs printed on them, and I can have that as their, like, reward. I really love Rainbow Sprinkle Studio for clip art. Let me see if she has something that I can just buy. She has a bunch of these clip art sets. I was just kind of hoping she had one that would fit the bill. You can see there's like different little cookie shapes in there. So I'm just gonna make a challenge for each of, like there's a stocking, there's a Christmas tree cookie, candy cane, a cake pop, and her clip art is my favorite. Um, so we'll do that Thursday or Friday of next week. The other thing we're doing is this All Roads Lead Home Craft. I think this might be for 
maybe our bulletin board outside or inside to be honest I don't know we still have space out in our hallway um we're gonna do a directed drawing sometime it's gonna be a crafting week we're gonna go do a directed drawing at some point but I was trying to look and see if I can make it as like normal as possible but I'm not sure we're gonna start place value next week I started writing a song to Savage Love it was in the Target parking lot when I was thinking of it. My kids love the Savage Love song. So I was kind of trying to think of a good way to do place value. And I was like, oh, that'd be a good one. And I haven't written a song for it yet because I don't know why I should. It's one of the most important skills, but I try to build phrases as I'm listening to the song. So when they sing Savage Love, did somebody, did somebody break your heart? I just think like place value. Da, 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 did somebody ever tell you da, 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 and I just kind of like come up with it as I'm listening to the song me, I love 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 love. Love. that's how I do it um so I'm working on a place value song so I want to have that done for Monday but I put it in my voice notes so I'm gonna try to finish that song this weekend and have it done and ready for them to learn on Monday when we start place value and I looked back at my old planner and I saw that I did, um, I was teaching addition in kindergarten around this time. And what I did was like this snowball game where you just like write something on a piece of paper and they have like a little snowball toss or fight. Um, so we're going to do that with place value. So I'm going to put um, a number, just like a two digit, two digit, might throw a couple of three digit numbers in there for fun. On a piece, a plain piece of white paper, crumple them all up and then I will let them kind of toss them around for a little bit. And when they stop, They'll, each kid will open it up, they'll come up, we'll talk about the, um, the place value, they will help me build it with um, Unifix cubes. I like to start with Unifix cubes instead of base 10 box and kind of show them like, just like it's a little bit easier for them to see versus the base 10 blocks, like it's a transition. So we're gonna do base 10 cubes or Unifix cubes, and then we'll move into base 10 blocks. But for the first day, I wanna do Unifix cubes. Um, so we'll all work on building the numbers. That is how we are starting place value. Um, and I also am finding that introducing math concepts with some sort of game on the first day is like a really, a really nice way to kind of jump into it and get them excited about it. So we're doing that. Um, we're not really going to be doing much science and social studies because we're doing holidays around the world the week after. So really, we're just going to be doing reading, writing, and crafting. So that is what is going to be next week. I'm going to pick up around the classroom a little bit and then I will go. We are leaving. Make sure you like this video. If it was helpful, leave me a comment. Let me know below what you found interesting from this vlog or what you want to hear more about or see more about. Subscribe to join our family down below and I will see you in the next one.